Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea LS4B. It's on natural selection. I believe natural selection, as proposed by Charles Darwin, is one of the greatest ideas in all of science. A lot of people think wrongly that Darwin's famous because he came up with this idea of evolution. That's not true. What he really came up with was a mechanism that explains why evolution occurs. And the definition I give my students, the ones that I want them to remember from the beginning of the year to the end, is it's differential reproductive success but we'll come to that in just a second. One of the greatest examples of natural selection that we've seen in the modern day is the story of the peppered moth. The peppered moth comes in two different forms, a dark form, which is actually dominant, and a light form, which is recessive. And the trees that they live in are generally light. And so if you're a bird trying to find these peppered moths, this dark one is gonna stand out. So you're gonna eat those, and then the light ones are gonna be greater in number in the population. But what happened during the Industrial Revolution is the factories started pumping out so much coal dust that these trees were covered in this black soot. And so what happened at that point, now the dark ones were able to camouflage and the light ones stuck out like a sore thumb. And so if we look at the data that was collected, so data in 1848, 98% of the moths were light in color, and by 1895, that number had dropped to just 5%. And so what had happened, well, it's not like the moths had somehow changed their colors, it's that the birds had targeted different moths during those different time periods. And so during a time when the, when the um, trees were white, they were eating the dark moths, and when the trees were dark, they were eating the white moths. And so now, as we've cleaned up our act and the trees have returned to that white color, we're seeing more of those white moths. And so natural selection requires two things. First of all, it requires variation in the population to begin with. There have to be differences. And so a great example that we can see really over years is the natural selection that we're seeing in uh, bacteria. And so bacteria, let's imagine these bacteria right here show different levels of resistant to antibiotics. And so some are going to have a high level of resistance to antibiotics, antibiotics like penicillin, and some who are going to have a low. And so we have to have variation in those. And that's going to be genetic genetic differences in those bacteria that are manifested in how well they respond to an antibiotic. And the second thing we have to have for natural selection to occur is a selection process. And so something has to target those different variations in traits differently. And so if we were to apply an antibiotic to this population of bacteria, it's going to kill all the ones that have low resistance to the antibiotics. And so after selection, we're going to only have bacteria that survive that are resistant to the antibiotic. And so that population is going to change. As these reproduce, we're going to have a different population. And so how do you teach this? What's the teaching progression? Well, on the low elementary grades, you shouldn't. It's just intentionally left blank. As you move into the upper elementary grades, you want to talk about differences in organisms. And the idea that as they look at any population of organisms, you're going to see differences. So if we have a bunch of giraffes, there are going to be differences in their neck length. If we were to look at tigers, differences in their stripe patterns, or polar bears, difference in their weight. And what those differences can lead to is differences in survival. And so imagine during a drought when there's not a lot of leaves close to the ground, the taller giraffes are going to do well, and the shorter giraffes, not so much. And so that survival difference is eventually going to allow them to find mates and reproduce differently. And so you have to have differences to begin with, and then those differences are going to be played against their environment. As you move into middle school, you really want to talk specifically about the two parts of natural selection. This idea that you have variation in the population, so variation like we saw in the peppered moths, or variation like we see in these bacteria, and then you have a selection process, a selection process where something in the environment is selecting for or against individuals. Now when Darwin was trying to explain this to people, he started not with nature, but he started with artificial selection. So what's artificial selection? That's something that we can see during our lifetime. Artificial selection is when you have variation in a population, so like variation in these wolves, and then you have a selective pressure, but that selective pressure is humans. And so all of the different dog breeds that we have on our planets, all of the different crops that we have on our planets have been created by humans. And we've created them by selecting traits that we like and getting rid of traits that we don't. So breeding specific wolves over time created all the dog breeds that we have on our planet. As you move into high school, then you want to talk specifically about 
these two things. The idea that there are genetic variation in the population. So going back to the peppered moths, there were genetic differences between these two moths. These white ones were going to be a recessive trait. The dark ones were going to be a dominant trait. And that gene or genetic difference has to man itself, manifest itself in a trait variation. If we didn't see a difference on the outside, the environment wouldn't be able to select for or against any of these individuals. But if we have genetic variation that creates trait variation, and then we have selection in our environment, we're always going to have natural selection occur. And natural selection can eventually lead to adaptation, which is going to be the next video, and I hope that was helpful.